What up, gang? It's your boy Zai back with another banger. Hey, it was a topic that came up some months ago, and um, I did a video on seedless watermelon probably about a year ago. It was a quick little video, just trying to brush the surface when it came to polyploids, and um, I really wanted all the uh, conversation around triploids. To kind of die down before we got into a more in-depth explanation of polyploids. Polyploids meaning anything more than a diploid. And today we're going to break that down so that everyone understands polyploids. Without further ado, let's get straight into it. Get out. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Here. Yeah, you know it. Turn up the leaf blower in the long join the discord so when all of the conversation around triploids was happening whatever whenever it was um i really wanted to stay away you had a lot of people in my dms on instagram or pulling up to discord or messaging comments on youtube just asking yo za explain to us triploids how they work um at the time i knew for a fact that we as a community wasn't ready to start talking about triploids. Um, we have yet to have a strong foundation on polyploids as a whole. So today I really wanted to um, help you guys grasp the concept of not just um, diploids, but also uh, triploids, tetraploids, hexaploids, having a good understanding and a good strong foundation just in case somebody ever tries to wave some fancy little words in your face, man, all right? Most plants and organisms in general are diploids. Diploids, diploids, however you want to pronounce it, right? That means they have two sets of chromosomes. But in order to understand a diploid, we need to start with a haploid. If a diploid is a organism with two sets of chromosomes, a haploid is an organism with just one set of chromosomes. So that's sort of the beginning, right? In most normal situations, um, an organism is gonna get a set of chromosome from each parent, mother and father. So generally, they'll have two. Many organisms have more than two. This is uh, a polyploid. In agriculture, we've seen um, science and agriculture step outside of the normal diploid, uh, which we used to, right? The normal two sets of chromosomes. We also know that in some cases, some organisms naturally occur with more than two sets of chromosomes. And when any time an organism has more than two sets of chromosomes, it's considered a polyploid. All right. Um, Anything that's more than a diploid is considered a polyploid. And we may hear that term tossed around a bit throughout our community, but today I really wanted to give a good, strong understanding of what it is, right? Polyploid is any organism that has more than two sets of chromosomes. This is where triploids come into play when we hear the word Triploids. Triploids, just like it sounds. Three. Triple, right? Um, dip. Die or diploid. Die. Two. Triploids are normal within agriculture. It's a normal thing. It's been around for many, 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 many years and a very long time. Some examples of triploids in agriculture would be seedless watermelons, which I did a video you can go check that out real quick, quick short video, just kind of reacting to a farmer who um, was breaking down the fact that um, triploids aren't GMO, genetically modified, but more so um, selectively bred, right? And manipulated uh, in, in more of a uh, artificial selection way, right? But not necessarily uh, GMO. Now, you may ask yourself, 
how do we make a triploid, right? That's like the big question. How do we make a triploid in the first place, right? Well, um, think about it. If you know that a diploid is two sets of chromosomes and a triploid is three sets of chromosomes, then we can imagine that it continues to go up and up, right? So um, the next set, what do you think it would be? If we say two, three, tetraploid, four, right? Um, a tetraploid is four sets of chromosomes or more. That happens actually in some living organisms naturally, that they actually are born with four sets of chromosomes or more. In order to create a triploid, we need to cross a diploid, two sets of chromosomes, with a tetraploid, four sets of chromosomes. So you might wonder about the number next to the letter N. Um, in genetics, the lowercase n refers to the number of sets of chromosomes in a cell. Um, so n represents the number of chromosomes in a haploid cell, which has a single set of chromosomes. So whenever you see just the letter N, we can safely say that it's a haploid. The number two with the letter N next to it refers to a diploid. We know that's two sets of chromosomes. And three N refers to a triploid, four N to a tetraploid, so forth and so on. Farmers over the years have simply bred the diploid with the tetraploid in order to create triploid offspring, triploidy offspring. And they do this because um, it's an advantage to creating fruit that may be bigger, higher yields. They've spent many, many decades mastering um, these practices in order to create a stable product within seedless watermelons or um, seedless bananas. We also know that other fruits um, are a result of triploids as well. Some of your favorite fruits, grapes, um, seedless grapes to be exact. Farmers have put in many, 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 many years of work in order to stabilize these diploids and tetraploids, right? This is where I think a lot of the misconception happens. Triploids are the result of a chromosomal mismatch, right? A diploid, normal situation. Most all offspring plants, people, right, are diploids. Tetraploids, four chromosomes or more, that's actually natural as well. So um, you can create stability within tetraploids. You can create stability within diploids because the number of chromosomes match up. You can't stabilize a triploid. This is where the misconception happens because the mismatching chromosomes. How did the farmers over all of these years create the perfect watermelon, the perfect seedless grape? They have to stabilize the diploid and they have to stabilize the tetraploids that they're working with because the chromosomes match up, they can stabilize those lines. And if the primary focus is to stabilize those lines, the tetraploid and the diploid lines individually, then the outcome of the cross between the two will be stabilized offspring or progeny, ultimately stabilized triploids. But you won't um, stabilize the triploid itself. You need to create two stabilized parents in order to create a stabilized product. But without two completely stabilized parents, tetraploid, diploid, you're in big trouble, man. You've signed yourself up for some decades of work, and I mean working backwards. <laughs> you need to stabilize the parents and come into the outcross with no undesirables in order to have a, a, a stable triploid. And only then will you end up with a product that has all of those beautiful advantages that we higher yield and more potency and all of these good things that we want to express, right? We want to say, man, this is the new wave of the game. No, 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 no. It's no new wave. Um, there's a lot of generations of work that need to be done to 
the parents before we ever think about the possibility of working uh, a chromosomal mismatch, uh, offspring with, 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 with chromosomes that don't match. It's just not possible. So um, hopefully moving forward, we can take this as a learning experience and um, we can focus more on building a strong foundation on what we actually do practice with each and every day. And that's diploids, right? Um, these are the things we need strong foundation in in order to understand the more complex topics like polyploids, triploids, tetraploids, hexaploids. The number goes on and on. But first, together, let's understand the basics so that we can work our way into some of the more complex topics. Now, you're like, damn, Za, you didn't even tell us how they made. All right, you told us how the, the triploid is made by the crossing the diploid and the tetraploid, but how is it actually made physically? It's a good question. And I'm going to tell you today, it's a lot more simple than you think. Hey, you ever um, heard of the uh, disease called gout? Gout. So um, there's a prescription medicine that we use to treat gout. I ain't, I'm gonna say we, I ain't got gout, but I'm just saying that the people, you know, that they use to treat gout, I believe it's an over-the-counter medicine. It's called colocycin. I might have chopped that up, but um, colos, let me see, let me spell it for you. Let me find it real quick. C-O-L-C-H-I-C-I-N-E. Cosicine. Cosicine? All right, so that is an over-the-counter over product used to treat gout. That is the chemical we use to induce polyploidism. If you want to uh, induce polyploidism to create a, tetrap a tetraploid so you um, uh, can then cross it with one of your normal diploid plants, ultimately creating a, a, a triploid, then you want to go grab some gout medicine. <laughs> Whatever is, however you pronounce it, I spelled it for you, so you can go find it. Go get you some gout medicine, man. You hear me? And we're going to get you some triploids, man. But don't worry about no triploids, man. Because we getting a strong foundation in the diploids and what we actually need hands-on, eyes-on experience with, man. It's been another banger. I, I got to admit, it's been another banger. And I appreciate y'all. But I got some big news, man. We going live for 24 hours this weekend. Set your alarms, whatever you gotta do, set your notifications if you have not subscribed. This is the time you're gonna wanna subscribe. And apparently, more than half of y'all are not subscribed yet. I don't even got 5,000 subscribers yet. Show some love and click that button, man. Hit that notification bell, man. Like this video right now, man. I'm gonna give you a second. It don't cost you nothing, man. This is how you show me love. Go ahead, real quick. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, so this weekend, you are now invited. Since you clicked that like button, everybody click that like button, you are now invited. If you watch this video or any of my videos, you are invited. If you Team Zaza or friends or family of Team Zaza, you are invited. Team Zaza YouTube, Team Zaza Discord. We are lit this weekend. I'm going live for 24 hours. It's a 24-hour giveaway. We're giving away a pack every hour. We may we may throw in some different prizes, but I'm going to need y'all with me, man. We're pulling in some special guests. Um, hopefully, they pull up. If they don't, it's just going to be me and you, man. Listen, set your alarms. Even if I fall asleep, I'll be waking up every hour to run a new giveaway pack, man, or a prize, whatever it may be. We're looking for sponsors. We're looking for guests to pull up if you're local to New Jersey or if you're not local to New Jersey. Pull up anyway. Come to my house. We got some teams outside members coming over. If you want to be a sponsor, you want to uh, participate, hit me in the DM, hit me in Discord. Appreciate you supporting my content. Um, thank you for the love. Um, visit acinfinity.com. Use code Team Zaza at checkout. But most importantly, visit ZazaGenetics.com. Grab me some foundation gear to prepare you for your inbred line, man. Um, without further ado, I guess I'll see you this weekend, man. I'm out of here.